Hi friends, gonna make a chicken stir fry for dinner tonight. Thought you might like to watch. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. We're uh, trimming the ends off of some snow peas. Do we know why they call them snow peas? Because, wait for it, there's snow peas in the pot. I like some red pepper in mine. This is uh, poblano pepper, and we don't do any seeds because um, many years ago I had a diagnosis of diverticulitis. Frankly, I think the doctor needed to make a payment on his apartment complex that he owned. But anyway, that might be another story. I know for sure one time, you know, once you get a diagnosis, then every time you go back to the doctor with something, that's the first thing you think it might be is the same thing you had before again. I don't understand that. If you have a history of something, then it might be likely that you get it again. But... In one case, um, I got a diagnosis of uh, diverticulitis. It was the, the second time. First time was fairly severe. I spent five days in the hospital in Guadalajara. The cost of that, by the way, which I just paid, was $4,000 for five days in the hospital with diverticulitis. And the $4,000, once they got your American Express card in the private hospital in Guadalajara, every doctor on the staff sticks his head in the door and says, hi, I'm the lung guy, let's get an x-ray. Hi, I'm the foot doctor, nice to meet you. Hi, I'm the butt doctor, nice to meet you. And every one of them sends you a bill for a thousand pesos, which at the time was a hundred dollars. So it didn't cost four thousand dollars to be in the hospital in Guadalajara for a week if you took those guys out of the picture. Anyway, um, Still a very reasonable price for being in the hospital for five days, no matter what you're in there for five days. But what I was talking about was that the second time I got that sharp pain down there, I went back to the same doctor, and he said, Oh, you're having another diverticulitis attack. And he gave me some pills. And I went back a day later because... I was starting to get a rash back here on my back. And um, I said, hey, I'm having a reaction to those meds you gave me for diverticulitis. And he says, oh, wait a minute. You have shingles. So it was a misdiagnosis. But the family still thinks I have diverticulitis. And yeah, maybe I did, but... Um, I don't know why I'm sharing my medical history with you. I had a colonoscopy, and they said, yes, you have uh, three pouches in there. And I said, well, are they big ones or little ones, or how do you decide that? And they said, no, yours are all pretty uh, small to average, so don't worry about it. Uh, that was uh, maybe 
it'd be three years ago, it might be time to do that again. Anyway, um, in believing for years that I had diverticulitis, I developed some habits of not eating things with small seeds. Usually you take the seeds out of the tomatoes, seeds out of the peppers, seeds out of, uh, well I don't eat the raspberry um, jam or uh, blackberry, anything with those little seeds in them. Anyway, that's, uh, I don't know why we're talking about that. Except that it keeps my mind active so I don't cut my finger. So I'm putting this stuff back in the refrigerator for another day. I keep all of my things separate because they cook at different rates. And I cook them individually so that they all get cooked just to my satisfaction. My satisfaction would be a little more raw than for Lynn, but um, Lynn uh, needs things to be a little more tender to chew them, so I, in, for my taste and probably for yours, I overcook some of it a little bit, like the asparagus. Let's throw some uh, red onion in there. Oh, this is a big one. I don't usually buy them that big because you can't use it all up. It gets old. Also, I've noticed that if you keep onions in the refrigerator, and I do keep them in the refrigerator after they're cut, they seem to get stronger. I'm just going to put in about that much of that. And then, best thing in the kitchen, if you're one of my RV friends, get some of this stuff. I got this at uh, Costco. Best RV thing ever. Just that simple. And in the refrigerator. Works good for your wrapping your cheese. Um, leftovers in a bowl. So easy in the big industrial roll. So much easier than, you know, the little box thing. You know what I mean. So let's cut up the onion a little. Not much, but, oh, I'm out of bowls. Here, let's use one of these. Uh, I take the, I don't know what you call these pieces of onion. They're not leaves, they're rings, but they're not rings after you cut them into four pieces. Uh, let's call them arcs. <laughs> the onion arcs. Okay, and then that's, that'll be enough for our stir fry. Uh, earlier today, I marinated the chicken. Just uh, chicken breast cubed, and, um, mixed it with uh, ginger powder garlic powder, pepper, sesame oil, and a little oyster sauce. Marinated that. It's been marinating for a couple hours. So that's what's going into my stir fry. Asparagus, red pepper, snow peas, marinated chicken breast, and red onion. One more thing. Cup of noodles, noodles. Now I take this, I, I cook them in the microwave for three minutes full of water. But then I rinse them to get all of the 
cup of noodles spices out of them and just use the noodles. Most of the time we use rice, but every once in a while we like a change, so those noodles will go in my stir fry. Hey, you know when uh, you're a teacher or a student, uh, this phrase will go past you. It's, uh, there's no such thing as a dumb question. Um, juxtapose that against the other saying, which is, the exception proves the rule. Well, I got this question. Not too long ago, the last time I walked through the kitchen, and the maid was here. And the question was, why don't you have any grates on your stove? Because twice a week, the maid washes the stove. And she hadn't put the grates back yet. Speaking of dumb, um, I ordered my absentee ballots today. Uh, I'm registered to vote in the state of South Dakota. So we get uh, absentee ballots as foreign uh, residents, U.S. citizens, but living out of the country. And um, the ballots will be sent to us on September 18th, which is a few days from now. And um, I have a dumb question. Because um, my president told me I should vote twice. I heard it on the news, NBC. He said you should vote twice. Mail in a ballot and then go to the poll and try to vote again. Well, I'm in Mexico, so it's going to be difficult for me to vote twice, but... I figured out what I would do just to be fair because I don't like there to be any political stuff on my channel here. So I'm going to vote once for Biden and then I'll vote the second time. I'll vote for Trump. So it'll be fair. And um, no matter which uh, political stripe you have, you, you, can't, you can't blame me because I'm going to vote for both of them. Just to be fair to all of you, not just half of you, all of you. <laughs> oh, don't we live in wonderful, strange times. We're going to heat up some olive oil. A lot of the times here in Mexico, I get... Um, avocado oil at Costco. Um, we're leaving and going to the States, so I didn't get any the last time I went to Costco because we're leaving, but um, my chef nephew tells me that it doesn't smoke or burn until it gets up to like 400 degrees, so it's real good for doing this kind of thing. Olive oil is okay though, and when that heats up, I'm going to put in the chicken. Throw in one piece and see if it sizzles. Ouch! Flashed on my arm. Yep, it's sizzling. You don't want to overcook your chicken, but you definitely want to cook it. What I'm doing is, after tossing it with the pan, I'm turning over the few pieces that didn't get turned over when I cooked them. 
Give it about another minute. I'm going to take that out. Try to keep as much of the oil and stuff in there, plus the spices that we marinated in. And then next I'm going to cook the onions. Shake it around and get some oil on all of them. And I have some garlic here. It's, uh, I usually use fresh garlic, but I'm on fresh garlic. So I'm just going to use some of this um, minced garlic to get in the jar. I'll put that garlic in there last because I don't want to burn the garlic. I like to burn the onions a little. I'm going to add that to the meat. some more oil. Next I'm going to do the asparagus. And of course it's a stir, it's a stir fry. So I'm going to fry them for a little bit. Then the rest of these things I'm going to not only fry, I'm going to steam. And this is the asparagus that I'm going to cook a little longer than in my case, so that it's easier for Lynn to chew. Red pepper? Mmm. See? I need all this stuff raw. If I was making a stir fry just for me, it would take me about three minutes to cook all of it. up some sauce. We're starting with a little water. And some oyster sauce. And some soy sauce. some sugar and a little cornstarch. Let's stir that up. Taste it. Move in. Asparagus is good. Peppers, peas, more water to steam it. Well, we're ready to put the. It's not looking good. We're ready to put the sauce in there. Push it around a little, get all of the cornstarch that's gone to the bottom. And as it begins to thicken, I put in my secret ingredient. You can't tell anybody about this now. This is my secret. And I don't want you all, you know, blabbing about it. A spoonful of peanut butter. And it melts right in there. It gives it a great taste. 
there's only one way to clean a peanut butter spoon. Make sure it's not too hot. And here's how I'm going to plate it up. I got your noodles. And where's my spoon? There it is. Is that pretty? Now, Lynn doesn't like things as spicy as I do, so um, I take along with me to the table, Sriracha. No, nope, no chopsticks. I told my chopstick story about my Korean son-in-law. <laughs> Go back through some of my old videos. It's a story worth listening to. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.